Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Combat Corner. Power right, come on now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. And yeah, I'm going there, man. I'm going there, I'm going there, I'm going there. You see the bottom of your screen. Yeah, I'm going there. I can't believe I'm going there, but I am. John Jones is scared. But before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of this channel. Greatly appreciate you. If you haven't done so yet, be, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Pound the like button. Hit the bell. Share the video. Become a member as we are going to be doing live member shows starting on Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So be sure to become a member so you can jump on live with us. And if you haven't done so yet, please jump over to Rudy's Rant and subscribe over there also. Look, man, John Jones is the greatest fighter of all time in the UFC. He is. He, he, you know, even though I don't think he's won every fight that he won, his record says that he is, and his skill set says that he is, and his ability says that he is. It's not just about the record it's about his ability like ability wise his fight iq his, his his understanding of range and distance and you know at 205 he was the tallest guy out there but it wasn't just that he was tall because daniel cormier's 5 11 5 10 and he beat gustus alexander gustison who's 6 5. it's about the understanding of his reach advantage his eye poke advantage, his ability to use his kicks to the thigh. That made it really difficult for fighters that were strikers. Let's say a a Rampage Jackson. It was like his knee was being constantly hyperextended. And consider the fact that this man missed so much time because of his own demons. With whether it's drug usage, being arrested, uh, hit and run, you, you name it being popped for P, you know, whatever, a pictogram, you know. But let's really talk about this here. He is scheduled to fight Stipe Miocic on Saturday night, and no one cares. This is the fight that no one cares about. The card overall is mid at best. On a scale of one to ten, it, I give it a four. I'm more interested in watching Charles Oliveira and Michael Chandler fight. I'm actually more interested in watching Paul Craig fight Bo Nickel, even though I don't know how the hell Bo Nickel is still on a main card, at a pay per view card when he's beaten literally nobody. But they're pushing him hard, and I get it. That's fine. But this card is mid. It's not anything making you jump up and down. The main card is garbage overall. Vivian Araju against Kareem Silva. Main card. Who? I know who they are. But do most fight fans know who they are? No. Do most I better off. Most casual fight fans know who they are? No. Mauricio Rufi versus James Lontop. Who? <clears throat> you have two, and, and Rufi or Hoofy, or however you pronounce his name, is a minus 900 favorite. Favor? Favorite? I'm shocked that Bo Nichols a 12 minus 1200 favorite on Paul Craig. Paul Craig loves being on the ground. I think Bo Nickel would be in a very dangerous position if he just tries to wrestle Paul Craig. So we'll see. The prelims, Jonathan Martinez, Marcus McGee, big deal. Chris Weidman, who's 100, fighting Eric Anders. This fight might have mattered five, six years ago. Today, it doesn't mean dick. Jim Miller is going to fight again versus Damon Jackson. Whatever. David Onama versus Roberto Romero. So, 
Marcin Tabura versus jo Johan Jonata Dinez. Mickey Gall versus Fermiz Brahimaj. Basil Hafez versus Oban Elliott. Veronica Hardy versus Eduarda Mora. You got four, five, six, seven, eight. You got 13 fights on this card. <clears throat> and of the 13 fights, I care about watching two. I'm an, MMA, I'm an MMA fan. This card does nothing for me. This card does less for me. Might, might, be, might do less for me than any card this year. It's mid at best. I give it a four. It might be a two. But this fight with John Jones and Stephen Miacic is one that no one gives a shit about. Maybe we would have cared about it three years ago. We damn sure don't care about it now. And I said that before. We don't care about it. And John Jones thinks that this will elevate his legacy. No, it won't. If he beats Stipe, he beat a guy who hasn't fought in four years. He beat a guy who's 42 years old. He beat a guy whose last fight, he got knocked into oblivion. By Francis Ngannou. This, this, this crap about how he's the greatest heavyweight champion of all time. It's the corniest thing I've ever fucking heard of in my life when it comes to MMA. Why? Because heavyweight champions get, they lose. They just lose. They don't keep belts very long. And John Jones, yes, he dominated Cyril Ghosn. For which he can't even pronounce Sorrel Gan's last name properly, which I find insulting. He says gain, even though everyone knows it's surreal Gan. It, it's one of those things where you you watch it, you watch this. This is if, if John Jones wins, who cares? If Stipe wins, though, John Jones should be embarrassed. If he doesn't think that that damages his legacy. He's crazy. Why? Because while he does have a win, two wins over Daniel, or a win and a no decision or whatever the hell it was over Daniel with Daniel Cormier, Daniel Cormier knocked Steve Miocic out and was dominating the fight for three rounds in their second fight. His third fight, he was, should have even been fighting. He was he should have retired by that point, and he was injured and. We all know it, and he also got eye gouged in the first, in early in the fight and couldn't see for three, four rounds. But if John Jones loses, it's an embarrassment. You lost to an over-the-hill, washed-up fighter. Don't tell me that Steve pays in his prime. Please don't say that nonsense. This man hasn't, it will not have fought in almost four years. This fight means absolutely nothing. And if Stipe wins, then what? He has the belt to do what with? Retire with? Because he's not going to fight again. And now John Jones. If John Jones wins, <clears throat> what's he going to do? The fight we all want to see is John Jones versus Tom Aspinall. That's the fight that whether John Jones believes it or not elevates his legacy with a win. It's the fight that people care about. It's the fight that actually matters. It's the fight against a stone cold savage. Tom Aspinall is a beast. He's an absolute beast. Yeah, he does have a, 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 some losses. That's what happens with heavyweights. Heavyweights lose. He's only got one loss in the UFC, and that's when he blew his knee out against Curtis Blades in the first 15 seconds. But he got that fight back and absolutely obliterated Curtis Blades. In a minute, he starched out Sergey Pavlovich. In a minute, he whipped on Marcin Tabura. In a minute, he beat Volkov. 
in 345. And I think Volkov would be a tougher fight right now for Aspinall than John Jones would be. I mean, you go through it. He's a, he's a one-round savage. Of his one, two, three, of his eight wins in the UFC, only one fight has gone past the first round. The guy is an absolute killer. And he is the guy that should be fighting John Jones on Saturday. Not Stipe Miacic. Sorry, Stipe. It's a joke. But listening to John Jones speak about it is an even, an even bigger joke. So I'm going to play some audio to show you why I think John Jones is flat out scared of this man. I've heard Daniel Cormier say, John Jones isn't scared of anybody. Mm -mm. Nah. John Jones may not may at one point have not been scared of people at, at light heavyweight where he was bigger and stronger than pretty much everybody in the division, taller, better, longer reach, all that stuff. When he had all the advantages, John Jones had no fear. When he's fighting guys that are bigger than him. Surreal Gone, look, man, he won that fight. All credit to him. I don't know what the hell happened to Surreal Gone. I think Surreal Gone froze up, honestly. And John Jones took advantage of it. But I think I think Gone just froze up in the moment. Because I don't think if they fought again that it would look anything like it looked in that fight. When they wanted to have Francis Ngannou fight John Jones. Where was John Jones? He didn't want that fight. He talked like he did. He didn't want that fight. He wanted a lot more money for that fight. People can blame Fran. Now Dana White can come blame Francis Ngannou now. Come on now. Because at the time, that's not what, what Dana White was saying. The tune has changed now that Francis Ngannou is in PFL. But let me play this for you. I'm going to go clip by clip. But this is the first one where Jones talks about that he's not ducking Tom Aspinall because, well, how can you duck someone when you've never been offered the fight? You've never, I'm sorry, never scheduled to have the fight. John, with that narrative, you've obviously been having a little bit of fun with it in the lead up to this fight. You're saying quack, quack on Twitter, addressing the duck things. What are those fans getting wrong? Why are you not ducking Tom Aspinall? What are they reading wrong about this situation? Okay, so um, I feel like narratives have been created that just truly aren't there. You can't duck a man that you were never scheduled to fight. It's like, it's like saying you got turned down by a girl who you never even hit on. You know what I'm saying? It's like me and Dana and Hunter have never sat down and, talking about, and talked about Tom Aspinall. He's never been on my radar. Never. Um, I mean, just a moment ago, he was, it was him and Sergey that, that was fighting. And Sergey could be in this position right now, and I would still be in the same place of, I've, I've beat people my whole career, and once I beat them, like, the show just goes on. Like, like the France fans, the French fans were just all over my case, and, and I just beat their guy. And, and I, I find myself constantly in the same position of, <clears throat> oh, wow, he, he, he just beat another guy. Like, what, what's next? You know what I mean? Like, when I beat Glover Teixeira, he was on a 20-fight winning streak. And uh, you beat Glover, and then everything just moves on. So for me personally now, it's just like I get that Tom uh, is an exciting fighter. I get that finally after 16 years, we found somebody who's seven years younger than me and 30 pounds bigger than me. Like we finally found someone who may give me a great challenge. And everyone wants to see it so bad. But for me, it's like what, what is it, what's in it for me? He, he changes nothing if I beat him. Beating Tom is just like beating uh, Cyril Gain has a whole country behind him, he's hot right now. What happens to me after I beat him? Nothing changes for me. So, so, so I'm not ducking Tom Aspinall. If I, if I failed to fight Stipe, I would be ducking Stipe because we contractually had been signed up to fight over a year ago. This is Stipe's position. The Tom narrative came out of nowhere. He won a belt and now he, suddenly I'm ducking him. I've never had negotiations to even fight him, if this makes sense. So the fans are just ignoring it. They're ignoring all logic and they just, I finally found someone that they think can compete with me, and everyone wants to see it now. I guess. Whoa. Let's, let's unpack this here. 
<clears throat> you were never scheduled to fight him. Okay, fine. You were never scheduled to fight him. Okay. You were scheduled to fight Stipe, and injuries happened, and that fight got canceled. Guess what happens when injuries happen and fights get canceled? The fight got canceled. So that can actually be replaced. It's not like the UFC hasn't changed opponents before for people. It wasn't like Daniel Cormier wasn't scheduled to fight you at UFC 200, and then you pissed dirty, and they replaced you within a few days and threw Anderson Silva in there to fight Daniel Cormier. What the fuck are you talking about? You never look like the girl you never hit on. Well, we know you've hit on women, so I mean, like physically, we we know all that. But you, how do you even? Situations have changed in the UFC since then. Tom Aspinall is now the interim champion because you got injured prior to your contractually scheduled fight with Stipe Miocic. So, in fact, now we have a different situation. Never have we had an interim champion not fight the champion once the champion was healthy enough to fight, except for now. <clears throat> except now. Stipe is not fighting anybody except for you. He doesn't want to fight anybody but you. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have a belt. He has no responsibility to the UFC to fight anybody else except you. Ducking him? Yes, you are ducking him because the reality is no one wants to see you fight Stipe. No one. Surreal gone? Surreal gone had lost to Francis. Surreal gone lost to Francis and Nanu. Another guy you didn't really want to fight. So Tom Aspinall is 30 pounds bigger than you. Last night, check, you came in weighing at 250 in your la in your fight versus Surreal Gone or 248 or whatever it was, 255. You were in that 250 range. So he's not 30 pounds bigger than you. But if he is, so what? You had eight-inch reach advantages over guys at, at light heavyweight every fight. In fact, you still have reach advantages at heavyweight against almost everybody. So while one advantage for them is weight, your advantage is reach. You don't want to fight him. You are ducking him. It is, okay. it is what it is. You're ducking him. You don't want to fight him. And you know how we know? Because when proposed with the fight of competing against him after you potentially beat Stipe, you say no. How is... How does not beating Tom Aspinall, who's viewed as a certifiable killer in the cage right now, not enhance your legacy? He's beaten five of the top ten heavyweights in the world. He's crushed them. You haven't? You beat one. But let's keep on looking at this. Now, this is the next clip in which he basically confirms that he's afraid of him. He, he doesn't seem to understand what he's saying. He's making excuses. But let's recap the fact, recall the fact that when he fought Shogun, Shogun was five years older than him. And he had an eight inch reach advantage or a nine inch reach advantage on Shogun. Should Shogun have said, Nah, I'm not going to do this fight. I'm not fighting a guy who's taller than me. Nah, but this is how John Jones rolls. He's going to sit here and say, well, he's heavier than me. It's heavyweight. Heavyweight runs from 206 to 265. Yes, you might have someone heavier than you. Remember Cain Velasquez? He fought Brock Lesnar, who was 30 pounds heavier than him, or 40. Or maybe when the fight actually happened, might have been 50 or 60 pounds heavier than, heavier than him. Because Brock Lesnar walked around at 300, and Cain fought at 235, 240. That's a bigger weight disadvantage for him than you against Tom Aspinall, for which you still have a reach advantage. But let's play this, this clip. 
would you then be open to fighting Tom <clears throat> Aspinall? Are you categorically thinking, he does nothing for me, I will not fight that guy? He does nothing for me. He does nothing for me. Um, if you're a person that wants to see me really challenged, then I get it, right? Like I said, seven years younger, like- Wait, hold on, hold on. He does nothing for you. If you're someone that wants to see me really challenged, okay. Yeah, that's the point. John, we want to see if you're really challenged because the reality is we all know the truth. You lost to Dominic Reyes, a guy similar height and the exact same weight at light heavyweight. Dominic Reyes beat you. He beat you. We can't help that judges are on the take. We can't help that judges will screw with fights when everyone watching on television and in that building saw that Dominic Reyes won rounds one, two, and three and beat you. Yeah, you won three and four. <clears throat> he got tired. No one's questioning your cardio. Your cardio is fantastic. When your cardios were on even level, he whooped your ass. You whipped his when he was tired. He whipped yours when you were both fresh. Dominic Reyes beat you. I'd argue that Tiago Santos beat you with two torn ACLs. And we all know that if Anthony Smith had some sense, he would have beaten you via disqualification for your illegal knee to his head. We saw it happen after the fact. Aljo Ming Sterling won a belt off of an illegal strike to the head by Peter Young. So, yeah. You realistically may have lost three fights. One would have been on a legal strike that it had. You couldn't even finish Anthony Smith while everybody else in the division is starching him right now. <clears throat> you lost to Dominic Reyes. You arguably lost to, a, to Tiago Santos. I thought he beat you. That was the most boring fight I've ever seen. A man with two blown ACLs could not really fight. And you couldn't put him out. In fact, he brought the fight to you. Get out of here, man. 35 pounds bigger than me, right? I get it. It's like, wow, this John's so good. We finally found someone way younger and way bigger than him. Let's see how he does it. I get that narrative. But for me, if you were my manager, if you were on my team, why not fight against Pereira, a guy who's the same age as you, and we walk around the same exact size? Right now, I had to eat a big breakfast because I'm getting underneath 235. Pereira walks around at like 240 and he has magnificent accolades. It business wise, it makes more sense. Fight the, I'll, I'm going to call him this fight the nobody w that may be more dangerous, or fight the guy with all the accolades who's incredibly dangerous, but it actually will affect your legacy. Me beating Surreal Gain didn't change anything for me, just gave me a few more million. All right, all right, all right. Let's, let's, let's go back again. Like the nobody. So Tom Aspinall, the interim champion, is a nobody. Okay. That's his logic. Alex Pereira. I love Alex Pereira. He won the light, the middleweight belt. He won the light heavyweight belt. We know why you want to fight Alex Pereira. Because you're not going to stand with Alex Pereira. You're going to die for his fucking legs. You're going to look to lock up with him and take him down. And you're going to do it inside of 30 seconds. We all know this. If you had a gentleman's agreement as a man and said, I'm not taking you down, I'm going to knock you out, then maybe I'll get on that train. Would I still like to see you fight Alex Pereira? Absolutely, yes, I would. But I know who's going to win that fight. I know John Jones will win that fight. Depends on whether that happens at light heavyweight or at heavyweight. So if it happens at heavyweight and he don't have to cut weight, maybe he might be a little bit better at, at stopping a takedown. I'm not sure. Or maybe if they make John Jones cut weight, maybe he won't be the same fighter he was. I don't know what will happen. The same age? Who gives a shit? Alex Pereira is in the prime of his career right now at the same age, at the same, at the same size. But Alex Pereira is not a wrestler. Alex Pereira is not really good at stopping takedowns. We all know this. <clears throat> and you want to fight him over Aspinall because you know Aspinall's already 
Aspinall's a, a massive guy who's strong as hell. He will outpower you. And if he hits you, he will sleep you. We all know that Alex Pereira will, if he hits you, will sleep you. We know that too. Alex Pereira hits like a tank. We know this. Will he get a chance to actually hit you though? Because you're going to go and immediately try to grapple. Or will you stand and bang? But don't sit here and say a nobody. The man has a belt. He has the interim championship. And he's beating guys that you haven't, fought. you haven't even fought. He's eviscerated the competition. You fought once now in four years or five years. Whatever it is. Billions. And it would be the same for Tom Aspinall, where when you look back and it's like John just beat Alex Pereira, it's bigger. It's it's just much bigger. And anybody who no, it's not. Logic, no, it's so no, it's not bigger. No, it's not. He is creating a narrative in his own brain to convince himself that he's not scared of somebody. He's trying to convince people that he's not scared. His his need to negotiate this in his own mind is crazy because he's doing this to try to convince public, the public, now I'm not scared. Pereira's a bigger fight. No, Pereira's not a bigger fight. Pereira's a bigger fight for Pereira. Why? Because if, Ale, if Poetan was to go to heavyweight and win the title at heavyweight, he'd be the only three-belt champion. Three. He'd be the only one who won a belt in three divisions. Pereira would go into that fight a humongous underdog. In fact, Tom Aspinall said if he had to fight Pereira, he would take him down inside of a minute. He would not waste time trying to stand and fight with him with his hands because he knows the way that Pereira is going to beat him is with, a, with, is with that left hook. He knows it. But John Jones will sit here and say, the better matchup, it's, it's, it's a bigger fight. No, it's not. It is not. It's not, and you want to lie about it? We First of all, we all know that neither fight's ever going to happen if John Jones wins because he's going to retire. He's not going to fight Pereira. He's not going to fight Aspinall. But don't sit here and say that Alex Pereira is a bigger fight. Maybe for Pereira, it is not for Jones. For Jones's legacy to beat a 205 champion, to beat a former middleweight champion, how exactly does that make – do more for your legacy. Like, you're crazy, dude. Hopefully doesn't want to. Last one for me. The Let's now jump into this next um, comment that he made about the Tom Aspinall not deserving. First of all, I hate that word deserving. I don't use the word deserving. I think they really need to understand what deserve means. You earn stuff. You earn it, you earn it, you earn it. I I'm so sick of hearing people say someone deserves. Like, I don't think Steve Bay Miocic deserves anything. He he got knocked out in his last fight. Why is he in a title fight? Why? Because he deserves it because he's won it twice? No, you don't deserve shit. Did he and hell, he damn sure didn't earn this because earning it would mean you earn it by winning. But that's this is the next comment that Jones made about this. Uh, last one for me. Uh I I agree that the Alex Pereira fight would be massive. Obviously, the accolades, I think it's a really strong argument you make. That said, I think that one of the critiques people have is not that you picking Alex over Tom. It's the he, he doesn't deserve to fight me statement. When you compare his career at this point to when you got a title shot, he has more wins, more stoppages, more wins against ranked opponents, more main events. He's got the interim title. So what is your response to people saying, like, not that you you take it out of Pereira. I mean, that, gosh, the guy's amazing. Right. But but the. Uh, Tom doesn't deserve me comment. Well, maybe, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't phrase it right. Maybe I didn't phrase it right. You know, the, the truth is he does deserve. Uh, this guy is running. He's running his own comments back so fast. Maybe I didn't phrase it right. What? But I'm going to let you continue to dig your own grave, you clown. Like, I'm so disgusted with this. This man is sitting here saying, I maybe I didn't phrase it right. No, my guy, you phrased it exactly what because you're trying to deflect this man. You don't want to face this man. You know what will happen if you face this man. It won't end well for you, sir. 
uh, many great things in his life. And I, I wish him to have a magnificent UFC career. I really do. Um, I have nothing personal against Tom. Except that I don't want to. Except that I don't want to have to be someone that goes against him in his magnificent career. Um, so maybe I shouldn't have said that he doesn't deserve. It. He is searching for words. He is like, damn, these people are actually asking me real questions, real questions about stuff. Wow, I gotta answer real questions because he does deserve great things. What I'd like to see him do is go on and have a great career. You know, so, so many times people like to just try to go straight to the top, you know? You mean like you, John? Like you? Like you? Do we remember who you beat to get a title shot? Should we remind you? You were 23 years old, sir. You were 23 years old when you got your title shot because Rashad Evans got injured you were 23 my guy and your, your win to get you a title shot was a win over ryan bader ryan bader was the win that got you a title shot the wins that you had before ryan bader were vladimir mashushenko brandon vera jake o'brien stephen bonner andre guzman those were your First six wins in the UFC circled around that Matt Hamill disqualification. You didn't beat some world beaters to get there. In fact, your tougher fights, the fights that really would have earned you a title shot, you had after when you fought Rampage, Machida, Rashad, Vitor Belfort. Chael Sonnen was a walkover. Gustafson, Teixeira, Cormier. Like, those were the fights. Those were the fights. You didn't fight those guys before you got a title shot. You fought them after. I don't think you had a top five win when you got your title shot. I don't think Brian Bader was a top five fighter. If I'm incorrect, please feel free to correct me. I don't know that he was a top five fighter when, he got, when you got that title shot. I know he was undefeated. But he wasn't some elite level guy at the time. He went on to become the Bellator double champion and all that stuff, and, and great for him. Machushenko was a who? Nobody. He was decent. Brandon Vera? Come on. Yeah, Brandon Vera ended up getting better in one championship and all that stuff, but he, he was never an elite dude in the UFC. Elite? Nah, never. Never. And you smashed his face in with an elbow, if I recall correctly. Let's keep playing this. And if we're in a business setting where he is and where I am, he wouldn't even he wouldn't even be crossing paths with me. He wouldn't even be talking to me. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. Does this guy not come across as the most condescending motherfucker on earth? His he sounds like he's so damn condescending, it's crazy. He wouldn't be crossing paths with me. Well, you wouldn't have been crossing paths with, paths with Shogun when you got your title shot. Stop. Is um, it's not about what Tom deserves or don't deserve. I believe it's what I do deserve. And after this many years with this company and all the work that I put in, I believe I'm at a place where I deserve to be able to say. I don't want to fight that guy. I want to fight this guy. I want to fight that guy. And that's why I would be more than willing to relinquish the belt. I don't feel like I need the heavyweight championship of the world. I feel like what I've created for myself is almost bigger than belts. Um, to take a step back and say, hey, you become the heavyweight champion. Go ahead and let's see you become a 17-time champion. Or let's see you even beat Steve Bay's record. That's going to be hard for anybody to do. Um, but what I do feel like I deserve is the ability to just take a step back and say, hey, either I retire or I start fighting fights that make sense to my legacy. And... Alex Pereira is the only fight right now that makes sense to my legacy. A guy who's young and, at, well, my age and active still and, and have something worthwhile to me. Now it was that he's young. No, now you're right. And you got to correct yourself again. And, and you're willing to give up the belt. Then give up the belt right now. Give up the belt. Let him become the, the champion right now. Or, or, or do you need to have the belt because Steve Bay won't fight you if you don't have the belt? Because he could have given up the belt a year ago. And that's what it was about. If the, the belt doesn't matter. You could have given that belt up a year ago. But the belt matters. The belt absolutely matters. 
and you don't want to you, you you won't acknowledge that the belt matters and that's why you don't want to fight him cuz you don't want to lose the belt that's why you won't fight him we all know why it's obvious i want i i've earned the i've earned the right to 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 pick and choose who I want to fight yeah that's that's called i don't want to fight him cuz i know he'll kick my ass i don't want to fight that guy cuz i know he'll whoop my ass hell we can so we could go another step here and say, well, why didn't you fight Daniel Cormier at heavyweight? Because you knew Cormier at heavyweight was different than sucked out, not eating Popeye's Cormier at light heavyweight. You knew the difference was there. You knew there was a difference in strength, power, all those different things, his fatigue levels, his conditioning. He was better at heavyweight. Everyone knew that Cormier was better at heavyweight. He went down to light heavyweight to not have to fight his teammate. Even though he says a million times that Kane was better than him. No, he wasn't. Nah, he was not. I think Cormier would have beaten Kane if they fought in a real fight. Practice is practice, man. I want to see you in the cage. I think Cormier would have beaten him. I think Cormier was deferential to Kane because he respected him and they were friends. But I think Cormier would have beaten Kane Velasquez at heavyweight. I do believe that. Because if you want to also look at it, Cain Velasquez lost to Fabricio Verdum. And who did Fabricio Verdum lose to? Stipe Miocic. And who does Stipe Miocic lose to? Daniel Cormier. So there's obviously argument to be made to say that Cain Velasquez wouldn't have beaten Daniel Cormier at heavyweight. We never saw the fight at, between you and Daniel Cormier that we all wanted to see, which was at heavyweight. But let's continue. Fans around fans around the world, a lot of people really want to see me lose. They really want yeah, to see me lose. They do. To see me walk away with all the chips just irks people. Yeah, inside. it does. I'm glad to be in this position to walk away with all the chips. And um, and um, yeah, at the end of the day, Pereira, man, Pereira is worth risking it for me. It, it's, I don't know how many ways I can say it, but it's not a risk when you know you're going to wrestle and have the, the titles. You know, he can have that finishing. Pereira is worth risking because you know you're going to beat Pereira. You know that you're going to wrestle Pereira. You know you're not going to stay on, his feet, on your feet with Pereira. So that's why you say it's worth risking it. We we all know this, man. Your your stick is up, dude. Your your stick is up. It's it's insane. Absolutely insane. I'm going to wrap this thing up though because I think I think John Jones has been exposed for the fact that John Jones is flat out scared of Tom Aspinall. End of story. He can flip it a thousand different ways. He doesn't want to face Aspinall. And he and, and the fact that he says, I'd rather face Pereira because of my legacy, when everyone with sense knows that you beating a guy who doesn't wrestle, who's not known for takedown defense, who's been taken down by lesser opponents than you, are it's not the real it's not it's not the same, man. You, we know it. We know it. If you were going to walk in and say, yeah, gentlemen's agreement, I'm not going to go for a takedown. We're going to stand and we're going to throw hands. We're going to throw hands. We're going to throw, we're going to throw kicks, elbows, all that stuff. This is what we're going to do. If we end up on the ground because I drop you, that's different. I'm not going to go wrestle, hug your legs and try to take you down. But that's not the way John Jones is going to fight him. Even though John Jones in so many fights has not taken guys down. But he knows that in this particular fight, that guy who's 6'4 and similar, close, not the same reach, but similar close reach, if he lands that left hook, will put you to sleep. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. And I'd love to see the fight happen. It won't happen, no. John Jones wa it wants to beat this old man, Stipe, and walk away and say that I'm the greatest ever. Because I beat an old, washed-up 42-year-old who hasn't fought in four years. But Stipe better not win. Because if Stipe wins this fight, John, your legacy, while very, very strong, you will not be viewed as the GOAT anymore. You will not. It will be impossible to view someone who got beaten by a 42-year-old who's been out for four years as the GOAT. When that guy has lost multiple times. Steve Bay Mia just lost to Stefan Struve. 
Stipe lost to Francis Ngannou. Stipe got knocked out by Ngannou. He got knocked out by Daniel Cormier. And that's what the heavyweight division is. And that's why your brief time in the heavyweight division isn't real. You beat one guy. You had no fights to earn that belt opportunity. You had none. You didn't fight Francis. You didn't fight DC at heavyweight. You didn't fight Sergey Pavlovich at heavyweight. Hell, you didn't fight Curtis Blades at heavyweight, who was a high-level wrestler. You ain't fought any of them. But hey, you're going to keep convincing yourself and say whatever you got to say to yourself to make yourself feel better about yourself. And that's great. You're a great, great champion. One of the greatest fighters. You're right now the greatest fighter of all time. You better not lose. That's all I got. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. Remember, we're going to be doing membership lives at 9 p.m. on Tuesday. So become a member ASAP. We appreciate you, man. Come on now.